When we measure an angle, we do have the tool of a protractor. We measure angles in terms of degrees. We measure line segments in terms of a linear measure, which could be inches, feet, yards, so on and so forth. How many degrees do we have in a full circle? 360. Okay, so one degree is a fraction of that circle, or in this case, one out of 360. When you use a protractor, we're using this protractor postulate, which measures from zero up to, we have a half circle, 180 degrees. So consider OB and A, and point A on one side of OB, so we need to label that angle. Okay, the rays of the angle form OA can be matched to a one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence with your set of real numbers. What that's saying is your set of reals was rational and irrational, so you can have 30 and a half degrees, so on and so forth. So the measure of angle AOB is equivalent to, again, the absolute value of the difference of their coordinates. So if I'm measuring the angle AOB, what is the vertex? Go ahead and label. Is it the A? Is it the O? Is it the B? A, O, B. Rachel? O. o. So let's put A here, B here. So this measurement A, this measurement B. The measure of the angle is equal to the absolute value of the difference of those two respective angle measures. Now, does it matter which numbers you pick on the protractor? Go ahead and look at that. Again, in the outer numbers, it starts here at zero, goes around to 180, where on this side it goes from, in the inner set of numbers, 180 to zero. Does it matter which set of numbers you use? What's that? Yeah. Whether you do, again, looking at the inner set of numbers, which here is 140 and zero, you can look at the ray, and because it's laying flat on zero, just look at where it crosses here, but the absolute value of 140 minus zero is 140, and if you look at the outer numbers, you've got 40 and 180. So you can do the absolute value of 180 minus 40, which is also 140. The important thing is with the protractor is if you're following the numbers on the outside, both of the numbers that the rays intersect, you're using both the numbers from either the outside or the inner set of numbers. Underneath, classifying. So you may be given a question with an algebraic expression where you have to go back and substitute the value of x and then classify it according to its angle measure. The first angle Let's actually let's talk about the second one first. This is an angle measure, we'll call that A, where A is exactly 90 degrees. That's what the box means. So this is a right angle. This angle measure looks to be greater than zero, but less than 90. So it's a compound inequality. What type of angle measure is between, Ethan? acute. Third one, again, that looks to be greater than 90. And then the last one looks to be exactly 180. So we talked about this in the beginning. If I call this A, A is exactly 180 degrees. This is a straight angle. When it's between, again, here's angle A, when angle A is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, that's an obtuse angle. Angle addition, it's going to be very similar to segment addition. It says that D is in the interior of ABC, so let's label this angle. Call this A, B, C. D is in the interior, so somewhere within the two rays. 
It talks about the measure of ABC, the measure of angle ABD, and the measure of angle CBD. So I'm going to draw a ray starting at endpoint B through D. So I actually have angle ABD is here, angle CBD is here, and what it's saying is, is the whole angle, ABC again is the whole, is equal to the sum of its parts. So go ahead and take a look at example one to see if you can draw the picture. T is in the interior of angle PQR. We're going to find the whole angle. If the measure of PQR algebraically is 10x minus 7, the measure of angle RQT is equal to 5x, and the measure of angle PQT algebraically is 4x plus 6. So let's take a minute to draw the picture. So in this question, if you have a point within the interior, you have to then, the first thing you should ask yourself on the homework is, is ray QT a bisector? If it doesn't tell you it specifically is an angle bisector, then it's the sum of the parts is equivalent to the whole. And I don't mind, too, if you just combine these two expressions within the problem. So if I were to add those two parts, what's my expression? So when I add, I've got 9x plus 6 is equivalent to the whole, which is 10x minus 7. Once again, you can just show me the next line. You don't have to show all the inverse operations. Yeah. So the next line, subtract 9x, we get x. From 10x, we get x, and then negative 7. Add that over to the 6, we get a positive 13. It didn't ask us to find the value of x, though. If you go back to the question, it said find the measure of angle PQR. So off to the side, the whole angle, right here in the expression, 10 times 13 minus 7. 130 minus 7, Ethan, 123. So you should, again, answer the question uh, in terms, again, what, it, what it was asking for. The measure of angle PQR is equal to 123, include your unit, of degrees. The top of the next page, again, I'm just highlighting... Okay, we talked about congruent segments have equal measures in terms of length or distance. So distances or lengths are equal, segments themselves are congruent. It's the same with angles. So angles that have the same measure are called congruent. And we typically mark the angle, so instead of a dash, we have the curve between. You can do one of those lines, you can do two arcs, rather, instead of lines, because they're curved. So an equal number of arcs in a picture with each angle will indicate they are congruent. So in this case, you can also, instead of writing out angle ABC, you can number it. Okay, so it's a little bit shorter. So what are equal, that's the angle measures angles themselves are congruent. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. As far as notation, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Okay? In this case, it mentions that the angle bisector is a ray. Depending on the type of problem you work with, it doesn't necessarily have to be a ray. It can be a line, a line segment. But what's important is that it divides an angle into two angles that are congruent. So in the diagram to the right, it's saying that VW, again, bisects XVU. So I want you this time to actually write the three letters. So if I say XVW, that is congruent to angle. Ethan? W, V, U. So therefore, their measures, the measure of X, V, W, is equal to the measure of angle W, V, U. X, V, W. It's easier to put the numbers in there. 
You can, but some of the questions, again, they're not always going to say the measure of angle 1 equals. They're going to give you the angles in terms of the vertices, so you have to know where they are within a picture. In this question, it's saying RQ is a bisector. So RQ bisects this angle here, so that means this angle is congruent to that angle. If the angles are congruent, their measures are equal. So the measure of angle PRQ is x plus 40. That's equal to the measure of QRS, which is 3x minus 20. The next line, what would the next line be? If I subtract the x from the larger, which is 3x, add the 20 over to the 40 with its like term, Ethan? 60 equals 2x. Divide by 2x is 30. Find the measure of angle PRS. PRS, again, just to trace, is the whole. So x plus 40, 30 plus 40 is 70. We should double check here to make sure we get the same thing. 3 times 30 is 90 minus 20, which is also 70. So the answer, the measure of angle PRS is 140 degrees. So our first set of angle pairs that we're going to learn are below, which are complementary angles, supplementary angles, a linear pair of angles, and vertical angles. Complementary angles are two angles whose measures, the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. One of the ways students remember that is you can draw a line on the C, complementary, the sum of the two is 90. If it's supplementary, a little trick here is you can draw the line with the S, it looks similar to an 8. If they are supplementary angles, the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. So two angles that form a straight line, okay, are called a linear pair. And I'm going to go back and draw the pictures for the other two. So I'm going to draw a line, angle 1 and angle 2. They are a linear pair. So their measures, again we know a straight angle is 180 degrees. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is 180 degrees. So if they're adjacent, that's what they are. If they're not adjacent, that just means they're not sharing a common ray or a common side. If they are adjacent or right next to each other, they share a common ray. So you can just use your own, so if I say angle 1, you just want to draw them separate. And so it looks as though the sum is 180 degrees. Complementary, I'm going to draw a right angle because a right angle measures. Again, adjacent, meaning they share this common ray or common side, angle 1 and angle 2. Their measures add up to 90 degrees. And then again, non-adjacent just means they're not touching. They don't have that common ray. Vertical angles. Vertical angles are formed anytime two line segments, two lines intersect. And you told me that first, second day, first day of the lesson, when I had you in groups define what a point was, many of you said it was the intersection of two lines. So, Again, when any two lines intersect, we have four angles. In my notes, I have three and six are vertical. So I'm going to put them, they're directly opposite each other. So three, four, five, four and five are also vertical angles. Vertical angles, their measures are congruent. Okay, let's, I'm going to, we're gonna actually going to do a proof the next class, but let's just say, for instance, this angle was, we'll make the math easy, let's say this is 100. Along a straight line, what's this angle? 
80 degrees. And then let's switch and look at this straight line. What's this angle? 100. So because both of these angles are supplementary to the same angle, they are congruent. So vertical angles are congruent, so therefore this would be 80 degrees as well. So angle 3 is congruent to angle 6, again, if they're vertical angles, and angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. All right, the examples on the next page. Find the complement, find the supplement. Complement, it means the angles are complementary. So let's actually find the supplement because F, the angle is given as a numerical measure. Let's actually find the supplement of F. So what that means is the supplement, if you want to call it S, plus 116.5 is equal to 180. So if you have to find the supplement, the easiest thing to do would just be to take 180, subtract the angle measure you have. And what's that difference? Sixty-three and a half. So here, this equals the supplement of angle F. So complement, we're going to do it this way, okay? The complement of E, so instead of 180, I'm going to take 90, and I'm going to subtract the angle measure. When subtracting an algebraic expression, you have to distribute that negative all the way through and then just combine like terms. So this is negative 7x, negative times a negative is a positive. So I have 90, combine it with the like term of 12, and the complement would be 102 minus 7x. If you wanted to check it real quick, does 102 minus 7x plus 7x minus 12, does that equal 90? What happens to the negative 7x and positive 7x? They cancel. 102 minus 12 is 90. It checks. Okay? So the complement of an algebraic expression is going to be another algebraic expression. Now, number four. We have some vertical angles and we have linear pairs. When you have expressions with two variables, look to see if you can avoid setting up a system. Okay? So the two relationships are these two angles are equal and these two angles here are supplementary as well as these two angles here are supplementary. Do we have to use a system? So looking at this pink line, again, 180 degrees, I can set up an equation with the same variable. Solve for x. What do you get when you take 180 minus 26? 154. Divide by 11. What do we get? 14. So x equals 14. And then you can take one of your other relationships. It's up to you. Let's do vertical angles. And then plug x in in order to find y. So again, the vertical angles were here. They're opposite each other. Use my eraser. So this angle is congruent to that angle. So 5 times 14 plus 38 equals 8x. Whoops, I substitute that for y. 5y plus 38 equals 8 times 14 plus 26. So in this expression, our equation here, y is equal to 20. So then if you move on to the next one, 
How do I set this up when the measures of two complementary angles are in the ratio of two to seven? What may help in answering a question with a ratio says the measure of two complementary angles means the two angles first, you gotta be thinking the sum of their measures is 90. Now we don't want to guess and check because you have to show if you weren't, didn't learn that last year, a certain number of guess and checks. So what you were thinking of is you were dividing and then you went back and multiplied. So right away, change this to your 2x, 7x to find out what do I need to multiply them by so that the sum is 90 degrees. So 9x is equal to 90, x is equal to 10, I think you corrected yourself. What's the measure of the larger angle? 70 degrees. So 7 times 10 and then 2 times 10, the measure of the larger angle is 70 degrees. It's a bad degree symbol. Last one. So this time it talks about the degree measure of two supplementary angles. So I want to make note that means the sum of the measures is going to be 180. says the degree measure of the larger of two subordinate angles exceeds three times the degree measure of the smaller. So I'm going to let x equal the degree measure of the smaller angle. So then translating that to an algebraic expression, what's going to equal the degree measure of the larger angle algebraically. So in translating, again, it exceeds three times the degree measure of the smaller 3x plus 40. So I'm going to go back and substitute those algebraic expressions in. x plus 3x plus 40 gives me 4x equal to 140. So I just combine the x's, subtracted the 40, divide by 4, and we get x equal to 35. We are looking for the measure of each angle, so now I need 3 times 35, 3 times uh, 30 is 90 plus the 15, 105 plus 40, 145. So the two angles, we've got a 35 degree angle, and a 145 degree angle.